in this session let us see uh, how to cover up the disadvantages we have seen previously if i have only like you know two coil sides or one coil okay means if this is going to be coil this is going to sorry this is going to be coil side coil side shorted on both the ends okay disadvantage we have seen what was the what were the disadvantages like you know because of reactive power oscillational torques are coming and because of pulsational torque torque is going to maximum and after that zero after that maximum after that zero because of in phase component of current how to compensate that how to compensate that let us see as usual from stator side what is required from stator side only rotating magnetic field this is going to be a p c okay after that because of this what will happen we are going to have two poles here and which will be rotating at synchronous speed okay now let us think of my rotor in rotor previously we used to have only two conductors short circuited that is x and x dash and two more conductors y and y dash okay so if i have now previously if i have only x x dash how many slots were there per pole two poles are there two slots were there so slots per pole were one now if i see four slots are there four slots are there for two poles in the sense slots per pole are going to be two if i increase slots per pole basically oscillational torque can be compensated and like you know torque produced because of in phase component which was like you know pulsating unidirectional torque that can be improved okay so how it is going to happen let us see okay now Actually, these are the things which need not be remembered at all to analyze uh, induction machine. But like, you know, why slots per pole should be more? Okay. Or how that oscillational torques are uh, influencing the wear and tear of all rotating parts like bearings. Okay. For example, if you see that bearings, like, you know, means this is going to be the bearings and inside sh shaft will be there. Shaft is going to have oscillational torque because of oscillational torque. Wh what will happen? Wear and tear or lifespan of the bearings will be reduced. Okay. So in order to get a feel of induction, this is important. Now, for example, let me think of flux density in X. As of now, how much is flux density in X? Poles are here. As of now, flux density is 0. So, this is going to be flux density in X. 0, positive maximum, 0, negative maximum, 0. And what was this? Yes, omega yes. Already we have seen in our previous session. Okay. Now, next thing is, what about the induced voltage? Induced voltage will be directly proportional to flux density. Okay, so induced voltage is directly proportional to flux density in the sense if flux density waveform is like this, so induced voltage in conductor X is also the same. Okay, now let me think of rotor is having both rotor resistance and reactance. Okay, so if I have both rotor resistance and reactance, this is ER and my current should lag behind that is going to be rotor induced voltage or rotor currents which will be displaced in time by some angle. Now, this let me divide it into two components, in phase component of current and reactive component IX. Okay, so because of reactive component of current, some torque will be there, oscillational torque with an average torque of zero. Because of in phase component, some torque will be produced, which is going to be pulsational unidirectional torque. Okay, so BX is there, EX is there. Now, let me think of conductor current IX in phase component okay so in phase component of current in x in x will be same as this because induced voltage and current in phase component will be in line okay now let us think of torque produced because of this torque produced in x conductor because of in phase component is going to be b into i in the sense black into blue is going to be red like this okay now let us see means same bx 
same bx okay so means flux density in x conductor only so zero positive maximum zero negative maximum zero again this is going to be s omega st we discussed in our previous session okay and the flux density is here and induced voltage should be in line induced voltage is in line now let us think of current flowing through this okay so current flowing through this should be current flowing in x conductor because of reactive component of current because of reactive component of current current should be lagging behind voltage by 90 degrees behind voltage by 90 degrees so means it is starting from here zero so it will start from here zero okay so means my voltage black and current are 90 degrees apart now let us think of torque produced in x conductor because of reactive component of current b into i b i l so b is going to be black blue is going to be uh, current so uh, positive multiplied by negative negative and positive multiplied by positive positive negative positive so this is going to be oscillational torque produced so net net torque developed because of now what is a conductor x is going to be this red plus this red now let us think of flux density produced in y conductor okay so as of now so this is going to be means yeah if i think of here as of now it is zero after 90 degrees it's going to be positive maximum i consider so s is going to positive max so in the sense n is going to be negative okay so as of now y is in negative let me repeat again as of now x flux density is zero after 90 degrees of rotation x flux density is positive maximum i consider means that s pole is considered as positive so n pole will become negative so as of now n is going to be y is going to be having negative maximum induced voltage and negative flux density so flux density of this is going to be negative to zero to positive maximum to zero to negative maximum okay so what about my induced voltage induced voltage in y is going to be bil so sorry blv so flux density and induced voltage will be same now let me think of conductor current in y in phase component in phase component is going to be e and i will be in line okay now let us think of torque developed torque developed in y component in y conductor because of in phase component okay negative multiplied by negative positive so it is going to be positive zero positive maximum zero positive maximum okay so this is going to be unidirectional torque now let us think of flux density in y conductor flux density in y conductor or induced voltage in y conductor induced voltage in y conductor same as this y b y e y b y e y so this is going to be negative to zero to positive to zero to negative okay now actually i'm not discussing this to like you know you have to remember something like that let us analyze because hardly it will take 20 25 minutes okay after that if you remember conclusions like you know you will get a feel okay this is oscillational torque this is unidirectional torque or this is the reason why number of slots per pole should be increased so these are the conclusions should be required okay those conclusions anyway you are going to remember after this analysis but just follow me okay now see here induced voltage and flux density is like this so let me think of conductor current in conductor current i y and reactive component reactive component basically voltage is here voltage is here my current should be lagging behind voltage by 90 degrees so if it is starting from zero here after 90 degrees it should start from zero and this is going to be like this current so bil flux density multiplied by current is going to be torque developed so let me think of torque developed in y because of reactive component okay so negative multiplied by negative is going to be positive positive negative positive multiplied by negative negative positive negative over our analysis over let us observe now see here if i combine 
basically what is the net torque produced here net torque produced is because of x x dash torque produced plus y y dash torque produced is going to be net torque developed in the rotor now means in phase component and in phase component if you see so whenever this torque produced because of in phase component is zero this is maximum whenever this is maximum this is zero so this plus this this plus this if you see whenever this is uh, zero this is going to have positive maximum whenever this is zero it is going to have positive maximum so so this is going to be torque so this is going to be net torque developed net torque developed because of x x dash and y y dash so average torque production is going to be improved or not yes and the pulsations are reduced or not yes so it is going to be better unidirectional compared to this so wear and tear is going to be reduced or not yes so you added in phase components of torque produced let us think of like you know because of reactive component how torque is produced now observe here here whenever this is negative torque produced okay so this should start from zero here okay so whenever because uh, like you know b i black multiplied by blue black multiplied by blue is going to be you should start from like this okay oh sorry it is same but torque producer is red i'm sorry okay so torque producer is red so this whenever this torque producer is negative it is going to be positive whenever uh, torque developed is positive it is going to be negative so because of these two net torque produced is going to be zero or not okay so because of this oscillational torques are going to be reduced or not yes so if you think of red here in the negative side red here in the positive side okay so oscillation torque of this and this is exactly compensated or not yes so if i have more slots per pole more slots per pole because now previously only one slot per pole because two slots were there for two poles now i'm going to have two slots per pole two slots per pole so if i increase number of uh, slots per pole per pole what is the advantage oscillational torques are going to be compensated and my pulsations in the net torque produced is going to be reduced so better torque is going to be produced or wear and tear at the all moving parts including bearings and all will be reduced this is the greatest advantage okay and in the next session we will directly start induction machine analysis this is going to be only basic just to remember this it's more than enough and uh, as i have done like you know as i repeated this here you please watch this video again okay i have done correct only okay but i thought blue is going to be torque developed so you please rewatch the video you will get the complete thing